Welcome to the program. Philip Shaibo has rejected his impeachment as the deputy governor of Edo State by the State House of Assembly. Shaibo was impeached on Monday after members of the Edo Assembly adopted the report of a seven-man investigative panel. Also in the course of the program, we'll be talking about the Julius Abure-led National Working Committee of the Labour Party, having dismissed the proposed Labour Party stakeholders meeting organized by the Political Commission of the Nigeria Labour Congress. Welcome to The Conversation. I am Dagbo Adigbo. Let's talk. Philip Shaibo has rejected his impeachment as the deputy governor of Edo State by the State House of Assembly. Now, Shaibo was impeached on Monday after members of the Edo Assembly adopted the report of a seven-man investigative panel. The panel was led by uh, Daniel Okungboa, that's chief judge of Edo State, and was headed by S.A. Omonua, a retired justice. Shaibo was accused of misconduct, perjury, and disclosure of government secrets. Subsequently, Godwin Obaseki, governor of the state, picked Omobayo Godwin as his deputy. Godwin has been sworn in as the number two citizen of the state. Now, let's take a listen at the reaction of Philip Shaibo. My good people of Edo State, I thank you all for standing by me under these troubling circumstances as the Deputy Governor of Edo State. It is with heavy heart, yet a resolute spirit, that I come before you to address the recent events that have unfolded within our dear state. I denounce in strongest term the illegal impeachment by the Edo State House of Assembly over Trump up charges. This is not just an attack on me as an individual but on the very democratic principle that we hold there. It is a dangerous descent into dictatorship and a threat to the foundation of our democracy. Let it be clear that this impeachment was harshed because of my ambition to contest the Edo State 2024 governorship election under the People's Democratic Party, PDP. An ambition that is a legal right to all citizens of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. It's a sad reality that in our political landscape, ambition is meant with resistance. And those in power seek to silence opposition through illegitimate means. I have dedicated my life to serving the good people of Edo State with integrity and honesty. I have worked tirelessly to improve the life of our citizens. I've uphold the values of democracy and justice. And yet, in return, I am faced with baseless accusations and a blunted disregard for due process and rule of law. The allegations brought against me are nothing more than a full screen to conceal the true motive behind this impeachment. It's a flagrant abuse of power and a betrayer of the trust that the people of Edo have placed in their elected officials. We refuse to stay inactive while our democratic institutions manipulate and exploit for personal gain. We will fight this injustice with every order of strength in our being for the sake of the people of Edo State and the future of democracy. I call upon all well-meaning citizens of Edo, and indeed all Nigerians who believe in the principle of democracy and justice to stand with us in this moment of crisis. We cannot allow tyranny and oppression to take roots in our society. We must resist the forces that seek to undermine our freedom and trample upon our rights. To the members of Edo State House of Assembly who have chosen to forsake their oath of office and participate in this charade, I say this. History will judge Ashley for your betrayal of the people who elected you to represent their interests. But know this, you do not have the power to silence the voice of justice and truth. I call upon the judiciary and all relevant authorities 
to intervene and uphold the principles of justice and fairness. Let the truth prevail over lies. Let the rule of law triumph over lawlessness. I am confident that the legal system will vindicate me and expose the sham that has been orchestrated against me. I want to reaffirm my commitment to the people of Edo State, to the values that bind us together as a collective. I will not be deterred or intimidated by those who seek to subvert our democracy. I will continue to fight for the right and freedom of all Edolites. By extension, Nigerians that suffer oppression, I will stand firm in my resolve to see justice done. As we stand united in the face of tyranny and oppression, I urge all to remain calm and go about our lawful duties as good citizens and true Democrats. Together, we will overcome this dark chapter in our history and emerge stronger and more resolute in our pursuit of freedom and just society. Thank you for the opportunity given me thus far. God bless Edo State and God bless the Federal Republic of Nigeria. I remain comrade Philip Shaibu. You just saw there, Comrade Philip Schreibel, as of now, the former deputy governor of Edo State. This morning, he was impeached by the State House, and he has, of course, reacted, uh, which you saw in that particular video. Now, to make sense of this, I'm joined on the program by Evans Ufeli, a legal practitioner. Thank you for joining me on the conversation, Evans. Good evening. Good evening. Now, let's start off... Uh, I mean, our talks uh, with the legality, you know, around the impeachment of the former uh, deputy governor. Now, in the opening uh, reaction, he said, I denounce in the strongest terms the illegal impeachment by the Edo State House of Assembly over trumped up charges. This is not just an attack on me as an individual, but on the democratic principles we hold there. I'd like your reaction on the legality of the process itself. Well, the process is one that came with a lot of surprise because um, uh, up until um, two weeks ago or thereabouts, they were still looking for finding a way to serve, uh, to serve him the notice of impeachment. Okay, and um, the stages that the State House of Assembly is supposed to go through before hashing this impeachment were one that I'm not sure they went through properly because upon the service of the notice, the members are supposed to vote to decide whether or not they want to investigate and pursue this impeachment. Okay. Upon when that is done, then uh, a panel will be set up. Okay. That panel will now look into the allegation to determine whether the accusations and allegations against the deputy governor were true. If it were not true, the impeachment process will stop there. If it were true, then they will all bring back their reports to the National Assembly and say, okay, he has actually committed gross misconduct and such infractions. Uh, the penalty for staying is uh, impeachment thereof. So we, within a very swift period, the, the panel have been set up, they have reached a conclusion. That panel is supposed to take 90 days to conclude investigation and, and, and do thorough findings. Mm. That's what the constitution says. But this one, it appears, whether it was even less than two days, they have uh, finished their investigation. They are, they, 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 they are supposed to also give him a uh, uh, fair hearing when he's supposed to come whether by himself or with a lawyer of his choice, to defend the allegation, okay? That opportunity, I don't think, was extended to him. So, and the swiftness at which they undertook this, which is actually a laborious process, they, under, they undertook within just a few days, and now he has been impeached. It's one that falls short of the legal requirement of law. So are you, are you saying, is, are you suggesting that uh, the former deputy governor might just have a you know, a solid case in court because uh, according very, to him, yeah, he's uh, saying that he would follow legal process to yes. challenge this. 
Yes, you have a very strong case because this impeachment is a sham. In mm. fact, it's an abuse of democratic process. The impeachment is malicious, orchestrated by influence. It is not one that is done in good faith, to say the least, because the procedures okay, under which impeachment um, is guaranteed under the law are such that to be followed every step as has, has to be followed. The, the point where you have to institute a panel, they claim to have you know, uh, instituted that panel, but the point where they had to give him fair hearing to come and defend whatever allegation it is, they are off with the lawyer of his choice or, or, or by himself, it's not in the picture, okay? And because that's not in the picture, there is, um, you know, there is a violation somewhere. And uh, what they have done so far, the panel did maybe in less than a day or two days, and all of a sudden it's been impeached. When the law says that uh, they have uh, uh, 90 days, it's not as if they were exhausted in 90 days, but reasonable time is given to them. And one, one had expected that reasonable time would mean they would take out time to investigate the allegation. You talk about perjury and you talk about revealing government secrets after the two uh, infractions he committed, which you find uh, impeachable, as impeachable offenses. Now, I mean, this perjury, we, the report is not clear on it. And the revealing of government secrets, the report is not clear on it. And the person whom they chose are supposed to be people of integrity and all that. But when you look at the list, you find people who have had one issue or the other in the past in that list. And it, 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 it devalues the, the fidelity of, of that, that report. So I do not think that um, this is proper, mm. given the uh, democratic ethos. I don't think this is proper. I also do not think that a man's ambition should get into it. Uh, get into I mean, talking world. about ambition, you just highlighted ambition there. Uh, the uh, former deputy governor actually did describe uh, the scenario as a dangerous descent into dictatorship and a threat to the foundation of democracy. In his words, he said, let it be clear that the impeachment was hashed because of my ambition to contest in 2024 a dual state governorship election under the People's Democratic Party, an ambition that has legal right to all citizens of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Now, uh, I mean, should, looking at uh, the politics playing out here, I mean, and his uh, use of the word, a dangerous descent into dictatorship, uh, wouldn't you also want to say to some extent, choice of words there could be a bit out of context? Well, that is the, 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 the former deputy governor's choice of words on what has happened to him. Okay? And he, that is how he perceives it. Now, from, from the point of law, this, in, in many of the states where impeachment have, have been carried out this way, uh, through surreptitious maneuvering, they, this impeachment have always been upheld by the court of law. And uh, the court of law will make a demand that his uh, enumerations and all what he lost, he could have gotten as a deputy governor will return. Even though sometime before the law will come to that conclusion, the term of office would have expired. And they will just have it on record that he was once impeached. Even if the court eventually turns it over, the, the stigma still hangs and there. So I think that this is a very uh, wrong way to go about the issue on that reference. Um, the deputy governor, for me, uh, was not properly impeached based on the procedural circle we have by law, was not properly impeached. Because when you look at the formation and the steps that they ought to observe, constitutionally speaking, there's a breach in that procedure. And once a breach is in the procedure, you, you won't find under for the, sometimes the uh, State House of Assembly across the country contribute a lot to the decline in democracy, in democracy or democratic engagement. Because the State House of Assembly, uh, the parliament of the state, ought to know that this kind of impeachment is not what should come by influence. They should be able to impeach, they should be able to impeach uh, you know, a, a governor, a deputy governor on merit. How come all over the country it's only deputy governors that uh, are found wanted? Because the governors 
influence decisions of assembly because mm. they, they, they work as an apron of the governor. They have no minds of their own. This is one case where people just came together uh, because they have been influenced by the power that be to use their legislative functions negatively. But I, I mean, you, you, you said that uh, this case, uh, I mean, has a reflection of uh, a group of individuals influenced by the powers that be. But uh, one should expect that in a system of democracy, the House actually serves as uh, checks and balance to the executive. It should be the, the other way around. Very, very, very well, very well. But look at the allegations on that reference. The villain of government secrets and the uh, perjury. If someone had committed perjury, if, if, if impeachment is not, uh, is not the answer to that. Perjury, you will prosecute him for perjury after he has served his time of office. So, so, so what, uh, what offense is impeachable by law? Sorry, and, uh, what offense actually is impeachable by law? Gross misconduct. Gross that's misconduct. broad. Okay, that's what the constitution says. Gross mm. misconduct. So what does it entail? Sorry, what does it entail? Because gross misconduct actually is brought. So, I mean, what should it's constitute broad, yes. gross misconduct? Yes, the, the Constitution did not define what gross misconduct is. That is why the Constitution says that in the estimation of the State House of Assembly, if the governor or deputy governor is involved in acts that they perceive to be gross misconduct, then they can bring an impeachment action notice to him. You understand? Mm -hmm. uh, in their own estimation. And that is why you have a feature. The feature is now the uh, panel that is set up, okay, by the speaker of the State House of Assembly. And then that panel now look at it dispassionately, independent of what the national what the House of Assembly have done. And they submit their report to the speaker. And then the speaker convenes the House members again, and they go ahead and vote for that and pass, and pass it and, and go ahead. But if, if you look at this case, if you have followed this case through from the beginning when Shrivo fell out, with, uh, you know, he, he formally went to court mm. to get a restraining order to restrain the status of assembly from impeaching him. When he made up with the governor, he withdrew that suit. Okay? Now, they were living in harmony up until when ambition kicked in, when he wanted to contest, you know, for the governor of that state. And the, the governor, uh, the sitting governor didn't want that because he wanted power to shift a different region of the state. And from there, the tonsil degenerated. It got to a point where the state house assembly now came in. All of a sudden, they now, they now remember that he has a case of revealing government city, whatever that means. And it's also, he has a case of uh, perjury. And they have brought the two together and named it misconduct and commenced an impeachment proceedings upon which notice were served and all that. I mean, if you look at it, you know that um, this thing is not done in good faith. I am not, uh, I'm not speaking for Shraibu. I'm talking as uh, one who is just uh, interested in the case on that reference. And I've seen through a package of the House of Assembly's decision. And I'm telling you right here and now that it's obtained in bad faith. It's obtained in bad faith because uh, what they call gross misconduct, which they have outlined to us, does not in any way look like what is concocted on the basis of merit or right. on the basis of good faith. Okay, now let's, let's leave uh, Sh uh, Philip Schreiber just for a moment. Let's talk about the new a deputy a governor. Now, little is known about uh, Godwin Omobayo, you know, politically up until now. And uh, just moments after Philip was impeached, was sworn in as the deputy a governor. Just the 30, I mean, about 38 years, you know, of age. And uh, I think the most prominent aspect of his political, uh, what I call it, journey was uh, during uh, the last election where he contested under a different party, <laughs> you know, uh, for a position. But uh, what do you make of the new deputy, uh, particularly in terms of uh, what do you anticipate? His role and the duration. We know that the elections is just around the corner. 
Would yeah, you say well, any anything well, significant uh, should be looked forward to? Perhaps his, his CV has just been upgraded. How be it in the manner it happened? Uh, that is the only thing I see there. Uh, September, the tenure will be over. So they wanted the last days of tribal to, to be this way. And they have succeeded in doing that. How be it that they've done it illegally? So, I mean, there are still options of litigation which tribal should explore. Uh, the uh, current uh, deputy governor, it's one who was brought in by the substantial display of illegality. And they well, he, he should uh, do what he ought to do, but uh, the truth is that the real issue on that reference is that um, the, the, the State House of Assembly have not done well in this case. Uh, congratulations to the new deputy governor, but Shaibu must, as a matter of necessity, to go to court to seek a redress for the court to review what the state of assembly have done, whether it conforms with the constitution. Because if we don't address these issues in court, for court to make a pronouncement, we will be destroying what is left of our democracy, where people can just, you know, comment and, and uh, formulate issues, turn it against one who has fell out of favor with the governor. They may be collect gratification and then go ahead and begin to act out. If we if, if that is the kind of democracy we want to nurture and keep, and this is the kind of democracy we want to be quick to the next generation, then we're in very deep trouble. Mm. Democracy is is supposed to run on the basis of merit and on the basis of the principles and tenets of it as prescribed by the constitution of the federal republic of nigeria why didn't they follow the process through the provisions made and the durations that's required by law why the rush overnight just not too long ago they were talking about how to serve him all of a sudden the next week he has been impeached when did the panel when did they carry out the investigation and you know decide and came up with a report which they submitted with the house passed, which has translated into impeachment just now. Now, I mean, uh, okay. I mean, yeah, true. But, uh, but let's let's also look at the impact of of this on the uh, political ambition of the uh, former deputy governor. We know that he's going to intends to be a major contender in this upcoming polls in the state for the top job. How much of an impact do you think this will have on his political ambition in the state? And what does this, where does this leave the people of Edo State? The, you're talking about the, the new deputy now? No, I'm talking about uh, Shaibo, who's running uh, for okay. the, the office of the top job. How much of an impact do you think yes. this impeachment would have yes. you know, yes. on, on his uh, political ambition? And where does this leave the people yeah, of Edo you, State? You know, you, know, you know they're also in court at that level too. Yes. Yeah, they're in court at that level. Okay, so... Um, it, it shouldn't have any effect because a lot of people, active political commentators, we have seen that uh, his, his, um, uh, what has befell in his faith is not based on any offense he has committed. From what I know, I mean, what is being flashed all over the place is, is not is inconsequential. So he should go ahead and uh, do what he ought to do. Uh, as one who is still in the race, and also bring the legal action against the State House Assembly mm. for what they have done, so that there will be a proper judicial review of what they have done, uh, because in my estimation, it will not conform with the Constitution. They should go ahead and campaign, do his campaign. I mean, he is of age, he's entitled to contest. He, uh, he, he was once a deputy governor, he has that position in that state, he has a right to so do. I'll be that it's from a, a place where people want that is that neither here nor there. It is the people that was mainly decide who will lead them. And if the election is going to be free and fair, let the people now vote. Let the people now be the judge. Whether uh, it was wrongful or rightful to impeach him. The, the political scenario has begun. Now there are a lot of calculations and maneuvering all over the place. And people are doing all this 
based on the fact that um, they want certain interests to take over from Obaseki. And those interests will have to face the people. Let the people now decide whether or not those interests should see the light of the day in terms of um, getting votes from, from the people. I think Obas uh, uh, tribal should capitalize on this, the action of the state as well, okay, and do a rigorous campaign to challenge the status quo. And let's see how it goes. And those politics are very interesting. Uh, the intrigues, uh, you know, is one that is um, uh, interesting to watch. Mm -hmm. Every day there's something new in the politics of those states to discuss. So we we'll look forward to that, that time when the world went to the pool. It's very close. I mean, very, very close. Uh, all right. I mean, Evans, before I let you go, I mean, we're, we're seeing a trend in uh, what I call it uh, recent politics, not just recent politics, but uh, it seems to you know, come up again where we see uh, the principal or the godfather figure, you know, having fallouts with their uh, mentees or, you know, their, their godson, so to speak. I mean, look at what, what is happening in, for instance, uh, River State between uh, the former governor mm -hmm. and the current governor. And right now in Doe State, and of course, uh, I mean, a bit of that also in Undo State. Uh, why do you think uh, we are beginning to see this come up? And what does this reflect when it comes to the issue of godfatherism or uh, will I call it a uh, political influence in politics? Well, um, the, the, the dispute between the Godfather and the Godson have been there, you know, from the I'm coming back from Peter Obiobiano, the uh, uh, State Governor Yeson Week and uh, Ubara. Now, even between Obaseki and uh, Adam Sashomole, he saw how all that happened. Uh, Obaseki stood his ground and was able to overcome. But in this case, he's having issue with his own deputy, but he does not want the deputy to, to succeed. Okay? And uh, it, it, that, that tells you that uh, politics is all about interest. It's about interest. I mean, the interest but, but is worse. Where support. does that so, leave uh, the, 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 the principle of ideology, politics of ideology in all of this? The Nigerian politician does not believe in any ideology, mm. more so because the people also allow them to get away with uh, with all their kind of politics that is ideologyless. If there's any English like that, you said the people are also complicit in this. Yes, they are complicit, but they let the politician get away with lack of ideology. How is that, please? Political engagement. Yes, what I mean is a politician will bring his manifesto and campaign with his manifesto. And on the strength of that, he's voted in. Then he goes and starts working against his manifesto. And the people do not hold him to account. The people do not, you know, demand for the implementation of the manifesto. Don't, so don't you also happen? think that the people, to a very large extent, will have their hands, hands tied behind their back? They are handicapped? Many times they are handicapped because also, they are the ones who, who, who sell their votes. Sometimes uh, they are settled before the administration begins. Uh, sometimes uh, they just stay indolent as a result of fear mm. or incapacitation, or they are all preoccupied with the cost of survival. So they let the position get away with whatever, because most times they've collected some infrastructure, they've collected money, they, they, on the day of the election, their votes have been purchased, and all that. So when they have soiled their hand with uh, the, the uh, mess, okay, cooked for them by the politicians, they can no longer come back and ask for what originally belongs to them by law, having messed it up. So the people are highly complicit. Uh, those who are not complicit are ignorant. Those who are not ignorant are incapacitated. So uh, the people bear the brunt on whatever it is politicians have done. This is not to say that if Shrevo had become a governor, he would have done better, or, or that uh, we're, I'm analyzing this because uh, if he had been uh, given the opportunity and he become a governor, this is not to say perhaps he would have been the measure, would have redeemed the people. We're just talking on the scale, on the scale of what is just, what is fair. 
to everyone uh -huh. and all that. They, there are people who have been governors in that state before who messed up the state, stole a lot from the state, arrested by ESCC. They returned money, did three bargain and all that throughout their tenure. The state of our assembly did not uh, talk about their gross misconduct for which impeachment proceedings should be, should be commenced. Mm. But here is a man who has no such record. But some persons have gone to concord and cook negative record for him, for which they have they, they stood on to do this damage. I mean, are you there, Evans? They, I find it very, very disturbing that they will descend this law. And uh, these are people who were referred to as honorable members. I don't think this is the right, the right way to impeach a deputy governor All right. uh, by our institution. All right. Uh, thank you so much, Evans. We'll go on a quick break. When we return, of course, uh, we will continue with the conversation. Stay with us. You're still watching the conversation, and of course, uh, before we went on that break, we were actually discussing uh, the recent trend of events in a Doe state where the uh, former deputy governor was impeached today, talking about Philip Schreiber, and a new deputy governor has been sworn in, in the person of Godwin uh, Omar Bayo. Well, I still have on the program Evan Tufedi, a legal practitioner, trying to uh, unravel all of this mystery. Thank you so much for. Uh, hanging on Evans. Welcome. All right. Now, let's uh, still talk about, uh, look at this from a broader perspective in terms of how strong or solid our institutions are. Uh, talking about uh, from the executive to the legislative, particularly the judicial, you know, arm of government. Uh, how would you rate our institutions in terms of ensuring justice and uh, will I call it due process right now? And what do you think needs to be done? Okay, you are talking about the three arms of government. Yes, our institutions. Yes, uh, well, our institutions, not like our institutions are not uh, effective, but there are bad eggs within our institution that make things practically uh, impossible to have a democracy that is upright to the yearnings and aspirations of law and the constitution of the of Nigeria. Um, if you look at uh, the, the State House of Assembly, let me start from there. Mm. Late, it was only in 1999 and the second uh, leg of the Fourth Republic uh, that we've had this, the State House of Assembly active and independent such so that they are going to impeach governors or make attempts to impeach even the National Assembly, during the time of Gali Naaba, late Gali Naaba, almost in peace of Asanjo, where Asanjo went begging, knelt down before them and all that. Because at that time, the ethics and principles of democracy was understood. The powers of the legislature was understood. Today, it's about money. The, the state of the assembly collect gratification to carry out very dastardly acts. They have this power you know, um, given to them by the Constitution. Now, instead of them to use it to the benefit of democracy, they use it in a negative sense. They use it in bad faith. You understand? That is why the judiciary now exists. The judiciary is that body where you run to when the state assembly have acted in, in the manner on that reference, like they have treated trial now. It's you, what you do now is to go back to the a court for us for judicial review. Now, the court have its own prognosis. It's supposed to interpret the law, interpret the law to ensure that persons who are aggrieved get respite. Those who have been shortchanged get solace, get recompense. Mm. Okay? That is the, 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 the duty of the court to ensure that the illegalities of both the executive and the legislature are brought on but, that but, 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 Sorry, Evans, but yeah. I, 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 I want to yeah. get to specifics in terms of Nigeria's style of democracy. Are we practicing uh, the democratic system, you know, in its true entirety as a nation? 
our democracy is, there's nowhere in the world where democracy is practiced as uh, exactly as we find it already in the first book. Because you have lifestyle, ethos, culture, people's disposition and past or maybe, of life. So, sorry to already, interject. Uh, let, me, let me rephrase it. Uh, do you think democracy is the best system of government for Nigeria? Well, uh, I don't think so. Mm. The reason I don't think so is because democracy promises a lot as it is, as it is practiced here and delivered virtually not as it is practiced here. It, it, and a quick example is to say that, to ask people on the street whether they actually know their councillor or they know their chairman, local government chairman, or they know their, the person representing them at the state house, uh, federal house, uh, house of representatives and the senate. Uh, material uh, representation and uh, also, also uh, rep representation and all that. It tells you that because it's supposed to be representative government. By the definition in the principle of democracy, you are supposed to serve your constituency. Okay? But here, you notice that most of them don't serve their constituency. Most of them don't even live in their constituency. There are many governors that live in Abuja. All right. Uh, that, that brings me to another question as to if you were to sort of recommend a system of government, for instance, uh, which would you, you know, recommend for a country as, quote and unquote, maybe complex like Nigeria? Well, I would I will, I will, I will recommend a welfare state. Welfare state. What, what does that mean? Welfare is a system of government. Welfare is mm. Yes. That sounds more like yes. a socialist system. Yes, a socialist system in a way, but uh, can be diffused into the peculiar needs of that country, mm. where the common wealth of the country would truly belong to the people, where medical health care, uh, public um, uh, issues like things that have to do with social amenities and all that is, is developed from the common wealth of the people and passed over to the people. Because this kind of democracy we have sends one person to go represent thousand. That one person enriches himself at the expense of the other people. So it's not one that have a check on whether you are representing well or not. It only have uh, maybe what you call the power to recall for that of the legislation. And that power to recall is very difficult to even implement or to even uh, execute, okay, because of the rigorous process it will take. So I would recommend for a system of government that will cater for the needs of people that will ensure that all the children out of school are catered for, are brought under a classroom where they are taught and educated. All the elderly people who are no longer, you know, uh, take care of themselves are brought. In I, I'm, I'm, sorry, Evans. I'm trying to. I'm trying Those to sort of picture it in my head, but it looks uh, very utopian. I'm trying to picture it in terms of implementation, yeah. in terms of uh, uh, will I call it layers of government right now. You know, and, and adapting it to our current realities. Can I would appreciate, right, if you can sort of break it down even to the BRS minimum. It's practiced in some countries now, all over the world now. In the UK, for example, they have they take care of uh, the Asian people. They take care of uh, children. Okay, uh, those who are uh, indigent, they take care of them. In Canada, if you go to Canada. They have a process in, in Germany, is that way, uh, women are paid to take care of children. Okay? I mean, it, it, when you say it's utopia, it looks like it's not practiced anywhere in the world. There are many places in the world where public health care is free. In Sweden, uh -huh, you, you, in, in America, they have a insurance, health insurance policy, which you also uh, adopt in the UK. And in some other countries, you have all this kind of uh, public support. Uh, social support system is it's, it's one of the bases upon which a country is ranked as first world or third world. There are five of them. Meritocracy is one of them. Access to uh, credit is one of them. Uh, public health care is, is one of them. 
These are facilities that are short for the citizen. If you have all those, all those uh, uh, things put together, education, mm. then you, 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 you'll be rated. Look at Botswana. Botswana is going to flex that way with the capital income per head alone and, and all the deliverables. Okay, in Africa, they are, they are rated almost uh, a, 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 at the very top of that. So we could develop that. We have several apps on follow governments in Nigeria. From these several apps on follow governments, you can begin to instill all these, you know, virtues at the local government level, you know, from the grassroots to the state level. So the people at the grassroots are able to first hand get the benefits of government that they are being governed by responsible government, that the deliverables that come with being a citizen, they're able to access. From there, you move to the state level. The state is able to deliver its own. Mm. The federal government is able to deliver its own. You see, these things are not rocket science. We have, the, we have the resources to do that. We have enough resources for our needs. We may not have enough for our greed. All right. We have enough for our needs. And this government must, as a matter of necessity, look into how even if they don't call it democracy, they can call it whatever they want to call it. But well, not be a maybe government that take care of the, the constitution says section 14 to that security and welfare of the the problems of government. All right. So, I mean, let's let's bring it back to what, of course, uh, we have on ground in Nigeria at the moment, where we have party system, uh, where, of course, uh, the parties produce the candidates, and eventually there's election, and leaders are chosen. Let's take a party, for instance, the Labour Party, which uh, came out, you know, dramatically in the last election as the major, as a major force, you know, to reckon with. But recently, the Julius Abole, Abure led the National Working Committee of the Labour Party has dismissed a proposed Labour Party stakeholders meeting organised by the party's commission, you know, of the Nigerian Labour Congress. Now we are beginning to see the Nigerian Labour Congress. You know, being strongly affiliated with the Labour Party. Now, the National Publicity Secretary of the Party, actually in response to trending letter invitation as scheduled for Monday, described the organizers of the proposed meeting as drama boys. Where am I going with this? We are seeing parties that are meant to sort of serve as um, what you would call checks and balances, you know, uh, to ensure that the ruling party stays in check. Many of them are buried in internal crisis. The PDP is another party. Uh, what do you make of all of this happenings? And how do you think you know, opposition parties can actually perform their role as you know, uh, uh, parties that put the ruling party in check? The, the few opposition parties we have cannot even check the ruling party because most of them are lost in their own rivalry and uh, contradiction. So the internal wrangling of these parties that are supposed to be opposition parties, they have not been able to solve it. Julius Abure and uh, Labidia Papa's crisis have been ongoing for only God knows when, how long. Now, Julius Abure and uh, the NNC chairman, uh, Joe Abjiro, have started a new one, they have ignited a new one, that is rocking the Labour Party, and now is a battle for supremacy and ownership of the party. But from what we know, from what we know, the Labour Party is a different entity from the NRC. Mm. Um, yes, it, it, How it, different? most countries have Labour Party because their objective seems to tilt towards the yearnings and aspirations of workers in the state. It does then. It doesn't bring Labour Party under the ownership of uh, the NLC. It's not. A lot of people have analyzed this and I've looked at the registration of both. There are two entities. One did not know the, own the other. They have talked about trusteeship. Under the law, uh, an association cannot become a trustee of another association. You understand? Because mm -hmm. a political party is an association under the law. That's what it means. And um, a pressure group, which is NLC, is also an association. Um, a pressure group cannot become a trustee in another association. You can only have that in company where you have conglomerates. A conglomerate where the company 
is the parent body. It has some companies, several companies under it, and they all form a conglomerate. That does not happen when you are registering an association under Part C of the company um, uh, of the CSC. Okay, so we we must get that right. Uh, even Labour Party, when the first when the first started, when that party was first registered, it was not registered as Labour Party. It was the Democratic Social Party or something like that. It has a name of that nature. It became Labour Party at some point. But it doesn't, because even when uh, uh, Joe Ajiro, they were on, when they went to pick uh, the Labour Party, it was said then that 90% of uh, the NSC members are not even card carrying members. They are not even financial members of the party. And yet they keep talking about the ownership of the party. So, so yeah, are you say saying, that. are you suggesting just quickly because you're pressed for time, that NLC has no case when it comes to uh, being stakeholders with the Labour Party? They have, they, have, they have no case because many of them are not even card members of the Okay, Labor just party. quickly before I also let you go, Evans, it's what do you joint, make of... It's not joint... Sorry, uh, I mean, because we're pressed for time, what do you make of members who belong to another party, right, uh, and uh, are also strong members of another party. I don't know if that makes any sense. A typical example, for instance, is uh, that of uh, the yes, minister okay. of the FCT, who is a member of the, a card carrying member, you know, of the People's Democratic Party and a minister under the ruling party. And even with the recent deputy, the just sworn in deputy of Edo State, we put a flyer there where, you know, yeah. it, it was a candidate of the Labour before. Party yeah, and right now is, is, is deputy governor, you know, of a, a yeah. PDP ruled yeah. state. What does this reflect of our politics? 30 seconds. Yeah, even, even, even not too long ago, you look at uh, the resolution that the PDP made. A PDP, a PDP, a former PDP member became the running mate of an APC member to Edo. I don't know if you remember. You remember the. I, I do, I do. The, uh, so, is this healthy for democracy? It, it is. It is. It's supposed to be. If it's, if really? it's devoid of, uh, if it's devoid of uh, malice and uh, hurting the party or that other party, for me, I think it's, it's, it's growth. We saw that uh, during Obama's time, Obama and uh, uh, the wife of Bill Clinton, and how they, run, they ran as uh, two parallel parties, and Obama picked her to work All right, in Evans, the cabinet. I, yes. I, I sincerely apologize for cutting in, but uh, my producers are uh, making me to understand that uh, we need to go. But thank you so much for being a part of the program today. Thank you once again. You're welcome. All right, Evan Sufeli, legal practitioner. And of course, uh, on that note, we drop the curtains on today's episode. In case you missed it, you can always follow up on our YouTube page. The name is New Central Television. My name is Dakbo Adigboye. Bye for now.